Well, welcome along to Silverstone, everybody, for what will be coming up round 13 of the 2021 GT Cup Championship. It's great to be back at Silverstone and on the full Grand Prix circuit. The 3.66 mile uh, circuit has attracted a bumper entry for GT Cup this weekend. Uh, in excess of 40 cars we've got coming up on the grid. Uh, many a familiar name will be lining up there as the cars head onto the grid, but there's plenty of drivers that are returning to the championship for the first time in the case of some of them for a few years. So we've been able to, over the course of this morning, catch up with some of the drivers returning to GT Cup for the first time in a few years. It's great to be back. Uh, it feels like a long time out of the car, but uh, it's great to see such a fantastic rig, grid and uh, really been enjoying the driving so far. Whilst it's just a, a one-off outing for you this weekend, you know, as a former champion, it'd be good to come back for a full season. It would be great. It would be great. Um, and next year we will we'll be looking to, uh, to to compete from the start and uh, hopefully get some good points. Uh, obviously, a lot, a lot of lot of tough comp competition and some big grids this year. So, yeah, if we were to do a full season, I'm sure we'd have a great battle. As you say, a lot of tough competition, a lot more Lamborghinis than last time you raced in GT Cup. Yeah, a lot more Lamborghinis. It's great to see uh, Lamborghinis, Ferraris and uh, a few Porsches out. I uh, still haven't quite got the measure of them, but uh, we'll, we'll find out very shortly. So, Sean, one of the drivers that's returning to the GT Cup Championship for the first time in a while. Yeah, I think it was uh, 2015. Donington was the last race that I did. So uh, I'm a little bit race rusty, but enjoying it. It's great to be back in the GT Cup Championship. And uh, it's a little bit more special this time because we're raising some money for the North Staff's Children's Hospital for, in the intensive care unit there. So it's given me a good reason to come back and, uh, and, and, and do a little bit of racing as well. And just a little bit of icing on the cake for that, really. So a nice cause there. Partner with Adam Wilcox for this weekend, the driver that's been in GT Cup for a good number of years, so working hard with him to, to build the pace up? Absolutely, yeah. Adam's been fantastic, as has JMH. They're always great. I've, I've been with JMH now for probably 12 years now, so I know the guys pretty well. You know, the same mechanics are still here. So it's, uh, it's familiar faces. Uh, I just wish the racing was a bit more familiar to me, but five-year break is showing, its, uh, is showing its time, unfortunately. Laurent, it's great to see you back in the GT Cup Championship. First time in a while we've seen you. Correct. I mean, I started actually in GT Cup, so it really goes back to my early days of racing, here at Silverstone, actually. So for me, this was where I learned my trade and, you know, really learned a lot about uh, how to race and how to drive. And I've obviously been racing in Challenge uh, for the last few years, but uh, uh, this time we are here at Silverstone in GT Cup with the GT3, the Ferrari GT3, and it's actually its first race, so it's very exciting today. Uh, qualification this morning was a little bit, I think it was good. It was actually my best lap time, but I think I still need to do some catching up with some of the other drivers. Partnered with your old mate, Jamie Stanley as well. Yeah, we haven't had a fallout yet. Uh, so we've been together for four and plus years. He knows me very well. He knows my strengths, my weaknesses. So I think it's been great. And, uh, you know, I need to thank him and the FF Corsa team because they've really given me uh, an, uh, a racing skill that I can now use around the world. And, and here at Silverstone, um, British uh, favourite track after Brandsatch. <laughs> good luck for the weekend. Thank you so much. <laughs> so good to catch up with some of the drivers and we thank all of our marshals here at Silverstone. All of our cars are carrying a, a, an orange heart uh, on them and that is in memory of Robert Foote who was uh, uh, one of our marshals at, at Brands Hatch and was very sadly killed at a, at a race meeting down there just a couple of weekends ago. Without the marshals who are all unpaid but very professional volunteers, we cannot go motor racing. So um, we still uh, are uh, remembering Robert here this weekend and you can see down in the bottom left of the screen as well, the orange heart there as well. So uh, for Robert Foote, you're still in our memories uh, as are all of our marshals um, who are here to support us this weekend as ever. What a what an amazing job they do. Uh, so there is the grid of cars. It couldn't get any larger, could it? So let's just guide you through the grid. There isn't a graphic, but uh, the number 88 Team Abba Racing Mercedes reshelled. They missed the British GT weekend last weekend at Snetterton, but they are out. Uh, Richard Neary on board for this first race, and alongside will be the number seven uh, Radical of Ben Dimmock. Row two of the grid, you can just see at the bottom of your screen, it is the number 28 Brabham, Paul Bailey on board alongside number 61, which is John Dillon with his Lamborghini. So Mercedes, Radical, Brabham, Lamborghini, the front row, two rows of the grid. Uh, the third row of the grid sees the number four Graham Tilly Nissan GT3 live alongside the number 55 
Ferrari of Lauren Demise, who we've just been hearing from returning to the championship. And row four of the grid is the leading car from GTC. It's the number nine Top Caps Racing Lamborghini that for this race will be in the hands of Jensen Lum. And alongside it is car number 247, which is the LK Motorsport prepared Ferrari of Lucky Kira. Row five of the grid, uh, another driver returning to the championship we just spoke to, 113, James Webb with his Lamborghini. Uh, for company, it's car number 31, which is the Porsche in the hands of Jan Klinglenberg for this particular race. And row six of the grid, it's the... Jan Klinglerberg, by the way, is the quickest car in Group GTB in qualifying. Row six of the grid is number 34, Richard Marsh, and 333, which is Andy Stoker for this race. The seventh row of the grid is number 27, Lackey Christoforu out this weekend, alongside number 96, which is the Stanbridge Motorsport Chris Kemp-driven Lamborghini. And row eight of the grid is number 35, which is Nick Phelps with his Veluga-prepared Porsche, alongside car number 70, joining the championship for this weekend, uh, another Ferrari in the hands of Roy Millington. Row nine of the grid, it's nice to see Tom Barrow in the Saxon Motorsport BMW 1 Series, the V10 engine car, uh, back on the grid, number 20, alongside number 66, which is Morgan Tilbrook, at the wheel of the Enduro Motorsport Mercedes. That is the leading car in Group GTH. And on to row 10 of the grid, car number one, which is the reigning champion, Josh Jackson in his uh, orange racing powered by JMH McLaren uh, alongside the leading car in Group GTA in qualifying, which was car number 80, which is Craig Wilkins for Scott Sport. So those front 10 rows also give you all of the cars that have qualified on pole position in their respective groups. Now, there was one car that had issues in qualifying and we didn't see anything of it. That's the number 41 Lamborghini, uh, number 91 Lamborghini, I should say, that is in the hands of Fraser Smart. That will start off the, no, I was right, number 41 Lamborghini. Uh, that is Fraser Smart, who will start off the back of the grid for this one. So watch out for that car, as fingers crossed, it should make progress. Now, the other slight issue we might have is also the Brabham has been um, showing a few little issues potentially over the course of this weekend. I won't go into the details of them, but I think Paul Bailey is hoping that the Brabham will continue to run without any further recurrence of those issues over the course of this weekend. So watch out for the glorious looking, beautiful sound and Brabham B62 of Paul Bailey, who will share come the pit stop races with Ross Wiley. The pro drivers, by the way, cannot get involved in this sprint race that's coming up. They can only get involved in the pit stop races. And if you are a driver that is classed as sporting pro, uh, the likes of Sam Neary, for instance, being a sporting bro. Um, that means Sam, as a sporting pro driver, can only s get involved in one of the two sprint races over the course of the weekend. There's also um, championships to consider as well. Sam and Richard Neary are leading the GT3 championship and leading the championship overall following what for them was uh, a second place in the first of the two races at Alton Park, but the car that won wasn't eligible for championship points, so they picked up as many points as they could at Alton Park. Uh, they've been consistent all season, and in this reshelled car, which had an accident in the Intelligent Money British GT race at Spa-Francorchamps, the team, Abba Racing, have worked so, so hard to get the car out this weekend. So let's see whether Richard Neary in this race can return his thanks to the team. Um, he's a key member of it as well and puts a lot of work in to prepare the car himself. But let's see whether they can return this car back towards the top step of the podium. So 25 minute sprint race about to get underway. Round 13 of the GT Cup Championship 2021 is go here at Silverstone as the cars charge their way off the line. And Richard Neary is going to lead the pack up towards Cops Corner. A very, very busy Silverstone Grand Prix. So we're nearly three wide there as Paul Bailey and the Brabham try to sneak up the inside and I think there's problems yet. Yeah, looks as though Paul Bailey might have got turned around there. Lots of cars breaking drivers right and drivers left to avoid the stricken Brabham. But it is going to be Ben Dimmock in the Radical RXC that has picked up the lead of the race as thankfully Paul Bailey is not only pointing in the right direction, but everybody has avoided him. So the Brabham will continue, but is now off the very, very back of the grid rather than third place where Paul started. It all just got too tight, didn't it? Three cars going uh, side by side up towards Cops Corner. Something had to give. Didn't quite see what really caused the spin, but for Paul Bailey, that is now going to be a real recovery drive that he's going to have to focus on as the enormous field of cars streams its way down to the bottom of the hangar straight and through Stowe Corner for the first time. 
it's Richard Neary that has taken up the lead of the race in his GT3 Mercedes, which is going to thunder its way past Club Corner and onto the Hamilton Straight. And the tail end of the field is still only working its way out of Stoke Corner. So in excess of 40 cars having qualified this morning. It's going to be a very, very busy race for that Brabham as it tries to pick its way through the field, which it's already starting to do by the look of things. Yeah, there goes the green Brabham with the gold stripe. And here comes our race leader up towards uh, the village and the loop for the first time so it is Richard Neary that leads the race so late were they building this car they've still not had the time to put the livery on it or the graphics uh, and now by the look of things we've had a shuffle as well because John Dillon is up into second place and the fast starting radical of Ben Dimmock who led briefly is down into third position by the look of things the repainted car for this weekend so here comes the radical trying to sneak its way through up towards Brooklands Graham Tilly's there in fourth position fifth place looks as though it may well be the first of the Ferraris that sits there in fifth position and will pick up on all the rest of the group leaders as they head over the start-finish line at the end of this lap. As for the Brabham, well, still work to be done as it tries to carve its way through the field. And remember, for the number 41 car, Fraser Smart, also those problems in qualifying meant that that car didn't do a single lap, so there was lots of work to be done to try and work that car through the order. So there goes number 333. That is the car of... Andy Stoker, the Kanyang Racing Ferrari 488 that's built to European Challenge specification. Going wheel to wheel with Jan Klingenberg almost. Good to see Jan back in the championship. We saw him here at Silverstone racing a McLaren a couple of seasons ago. Done a lot of racing in McLarens, but he's under pressure from the Ferrari that sits behind in the hands of Andy Stoker. Andy Stoker equally as much has got the light blue Lamborghini of James Webb not that far behind. And Richard Marsh is not far off that. So Jan Klingenberg, I think, will be leading Group GTB in the early stages of this one, but he's coming under attack from the Group GTC Ferrari, which in a straight line has a bit more power, has slightly better aero, almost draws himself alongside, might try and cut back on the exit, but for the moment, Jan Klingenberg doing a very good job of hanging on to the position. In towards the braking area for the Vale. They flick their way through. If you're not familiar with the groups, Group GT3 is for GT3 homologated cars. Group GTO, for which this Radical at the front of this queue, is for low-volume manufacturers. It can also include GT2 and GT3 cars. Group GTC is for late-model challenge cars, so likes of Ferrari European challenge cars, that number 33 car there of, Jan of uh, Laurent de Mies. Uh, and the Lamborghini Super Trofeo sit in Group GTC. Group GTB is for earlier spec challenge cars. Group GTH is for GT4 cars. And Group GTA is for largely that we have in GT Cup, is for things like um, cars built to Ginetta Super Cup specification in reality. So Cup and Challenge cars and one-make series cars sit in Group GTA. That gives you a rundown of the groups as Graham Tilly's coming under attack from the Lamborghini that sits behind. And that is Lucky Kieran that was looking to, I think, try and feed his way through, was it? In fact, no, it's not. It's the number 61 car of John Dillon, who has, by the look of things, been picked off by Graham Tilly. Yeah, Lucky Kieran at the wheel of a Ferrari this weekend, rather than his regular Lamborghini. So here comes Ben Dimmock, second, third, fourth, out of Woodcote Corner. Lauren Demise is there in fifth position, but coming under pressure from Lucky Kieran's Ferrari that sits behind. But now that Graham Tilly has managed to coax the Nissan up into third position. He's going to set about trying to close the gap on Ben Dimmock to see whether he can thread his way through. Graham Tilly, who's been consistent in this car this season. They've had lots and lots and lots of third places. Graham Tilly with the drivers that he's been partnered with, a mixture of Will Tregertha, uh, former British GT, GT4 champion, uh, uh, that he shares the car with this weekend. And Sen and Fielding have also shared with Graham Tilly over the course of this season. Lots of third places. Uh, a few fourth places, but consistent point scoring. Group GTH is probably the most competitive class, and there's a, a raft of Group GTH cars, Aston Martins and McLarens, with some of the Group GTA Ginettas trying to get involved as well. Roy Millington at the wheel of his number 70 Ferrari is mixed amongst them, which means that Roy has rather dropped back in this race than from where he started. Started in something like 16th position, Roy Millington, but... I do fear that that Ferrari now is way, way down through the order. Yes, it is. Something like 33rd position he came over the start-finish line. So uh, Roy Millington either with a problem or a mistake somewhere or perhaps maybe lost a lot of time whilst trying to avoid stricken Brabham's and other spinning cars on the first few laps. So watch out for Roy Millington. Not a great deal of experience, but from what I've seen of Roy so far when he was racing at Snetterton a few weeks ago in a, in a one-off race that he had there, he's a very, very quick driver to say the least. And 
what he's tasked with at the moment is trying to fight his way through and past Ian Duggan's Ginetta, which he's managed. And then the next of the Ginettas who want to pick his way through will be the number 212 car, the Make It Happen racing car of Stephen Walton. As for the Brabham of Paul Bailey, well, of course, he spun to the very tail end of the field. He's now overtaken half of it. So he spun to something like 41st position. He's now up into 21st position. At Brabham, clearly no ill effects from the spin and is charging his way through the order. Next of the cars he's going to want to try and pick off is not that far up the road either. So for Paul Bailey, who's been a champion in GT Cup in the past, he was the GTC champion back in 2018 and 2016. He was the GTO champion back in 2015. Well, he is charging his way through the order at the wheel of what is a fairly unique car. It's the only racing Brabham BT62 there is in Europe. And the next of the cars he's going to want to try and work his way right up onto the coattails of is going to be Lackey Cristoforo's Ferrari, which he gets past on the approach in towards Cops Corner. No second invitation needed. Picks that one off. Should be able to pick off the BMW, the V10 engine car of Tom Barrow, which he also dives his way through on the way in towards Maggots and then Beckett's. So the Brabham going well here. And starts to thunder its way very shortly out of Chapel Curve and onto the Hangar Straight. Our race leader, though, which is Richard Neary, last time through, set the fastest lap of the race that we've seen so far. He's on lap number four at the moment as he bounces over the kerbs, heading out of Abbey. Two minutes, 1.953 for Richard Neary. He'll be sharing the car with his son Sam over the course of this weekend. They really have been stellar performers so far this season with something like eight overall wins to their name now this is a good battle as well that will be the number nine car of Jensen Lund fighting away with the car in the hands of championship returnee which is going to be James Webb whilst trying to get around the outside of both of them goes Jan Klingenberg by the look of things so this is something like ninth, 10th and 11th places I think it will be Jensen Lund I think has probably lost a couple of places on this lap now Graham Tilly is slowing is he at the wheel of the Nissan yeah all is not well for Graham Tilly I'm afraid car was running in third position but I do fear that the Nissan Nismo GTR 3 one of the cars that was built by Bob Neville's team and competed throughout both the domestic and European GT championships. I do fear that maybe that car has just gone off the boil a little bit there because Graham Tilly lost four places on that lap. So, yeah, Graham Tilly in seventh position now. Now, there goes the number 31 car of Jan Klingenberg. That still leads Group GTB as things currently stand. He's fighting away with the Group GTC Lamborghinis ahead of him, which will be... James Webb and Jensen Lund respectively but for Graham Tilly now he's looking to try and make amends for whatever problems befell him and looking to try and to close on the back of Andy Stoker's car so Graham Tilly from third down to seventh looking to try and get himself back inside the top six once more has a quick look up the inside of the group GTC Ferrari car that's built to European Ferrari specification but Graham Tilly in the GT3 car can't quite haul himself back inside the top six at the moment. The pair of them nose to tail though as they head in towards the Vale with already now the first 10 minutes of the race having gone, 15 minutes remain. Damage to the front of Charlotte Gilbert's car. Top catch racing Marcus Mantis has had a bit of a bike taken out of the front left corner and you can see that the bodywork is just fouling on the control Pirelli slick tyres that all of the cars will be running in these conditions. So not quite sure what happened there, but possibly cause for concern there. Let's hope that it's a light enough rub that it doesn't mean that the car is going to have to come into the pit lane because if there's any concerns about that tyre rub causing damage and affecting the car, which could have a blowout, I'm sure Top Cats Racing will bring that car into the pit lane. And this is a good fight going on in Group GTH at the moment. Into the pit lane, that's the Make It Happen Racing Ginetta that's in. So that's clearly problems for the car of Stephen Walton. Into the pit lane comes Stephen, who was the Fun Cup champion back in 2018, who he shares the car with, Chris Hart. Back to Group GTH, side by side, number 26 car of Mo Ritson, who used to race in the Junior Saloon Car Championship, looking to try and haul his way through the order and ahead of the car that he's running side by side with. That will be the 
car that James Dawlin shares this weekend with Alex Milekin. And Alex Milekin is behind the wheel of that car, the number 32 car, going beautifully well. Got Mo Ritson right behind him, and then Morgan Tilbrook's Mercedes as well. And that, I think, is for second, third, and fourth in the group as well. It's just allowing the group leader, which is the number one McLaren of Josh Jackson, just to disappear up the road a little bit. Yeah, there goes the orange McLaren of Josh Jackson. He leads group GTH, which is for the GT4 cars, but three cars behind, fighting over two podium spots in group GTH. Somebody's going to lose out. At the moment, it's the Mercedes, which is Morgan Tilbrook, but he's desperate to try and work his way past both Mo Ritson and Alex Milliken, the Belarusian driver that is at the wheel of that all-white McLaren and joins the championship for this weekend. Alex, who has been doing a chunk of racing in the Porsche Sprint Challenge in the UK, and this weekend is partnered in that car with the Sprint Challenge champion from last year, James Dawlin, who was also a, a runner-up in the Renault Clio Cup UK a couple of seasons ago. Now, Jensen Lunn is a busy chap here, trying to hang on to eighth position. He's got James Webb right behind him. They've then got the car of Jan Klinglenberg and also Paul Bailey at the wheel of the recovering Brabham trying to feel his way through as well. So that would put, at the moment, the Brabham into the top ten. Now that he's got past the Porsche, so a fantastic recovery drive from Paul Bailey. Bit between his teeth, pushing hard. He will still be second in Group GTO at the moment because the Radical of Ben Dimmock, which is in second place overall in the race, is the group leader in Group GTO. Now, Paul Bailey, at the wheel of the more powerful car, should be able to pick off the Lamborghinis. He's going to get past James Webb, I think, on the running towards Brooklands, but won't quite clear Jensen Lunn. Now, Jensen just ahead of him still, but another place picked up for Paul Bailey. That's now going to put him up into ninth position. It could be eighth, you know, by the end of the lap because he should squeeze the throttle on the Brabham. And in a straight line, the greater power of the Brabham might draw him alongside. Not quite, though, before Woodcut Corner, but should do it by the time they get to Cops. So up towards Cops Corner they go. Up the inside goes Paul Bailey. Yep, place gained. So that now puts the Brabham inside the top ten, bearing in mind it was 41st after the spin at Cops Corner on the first lap. The other thing that's well worth watching, I would say, are the two Porsches there. Now, Jan Klingelberg will be leading Group GTB, but right behind him will be the other Porsche, which will be Richard Marsh at the wheel of the number 34 car. They will be fighting for the lead of the group. Now, if I had a change on that lap, Ben Dimmock was second as he came over the start-finish line. The Radical is now behind the Lamborghini, so that's John Dillon now that's through. The number 61 car of John Dillon goes through and takes up second place overall in the race. John Dillon runs in Group GT3, so he's the group leader for the GT3 homologated cars. For Ben Dimmock, actually losing that place doesn't affect the championship points that the Radical would score because it's a car in a different class that's overtaken him. It's the points you uh, accumulate and where you finish in your respective class that count for the GT Cup championship. So a GTO car being passed by a GT3 car doesn't affect the points at all that Ben Dimmock would score. Ben, a former mini challenge champion in his respective class, also a radical champion as well was Ben Dimmock in the past, partnered with the multiple radical champion Steve Burgess again for this weekend. So Richard Neary leading, John Dillon second, Ben Dimmock third, Lauren Demise fourth, Lucky Kira fifth, Graham Tilly sixth up towards uh, Stowe Corner, the number 44 of John Whitehouse, former champion, looking to try and get through and pass Mike Price at the wheel of the light green and white Balf Motorsport prepared McLaren. I think I also spotted that Mike Price's wing mirror was a little bit askew as well, so Mike perhaps won't know that cars are approaching him on some corners. It certainly looked as though perhaps the left-hand wing mirror had maybe been touched on that McLaren. I'd need to see a better view of it. No, it looks fine, actually. I think it was just the angle that we're looking at. So, no, Mike Price, there he goes. White House right behind. Uh, there is the number 15 car, which is one of a couple of the newer shape Aston Martin GT4s we have in the field. That's David Holloway. David Holloway in amongst the Group GTA Ginettas at the moment. Ahead of him is Russ Lindsay, the number 17 car. Behind him is going to be Craig Wilkins at the wheel of the Scott Sport prepared number 80 machine now for third and fourth in group GTH the battle still continues Mo Ritson under enormous pressure from Morgan Tilbrook at the wheel of the GT4 Mercedes this is for 18th and 19th overall in the race but for third and fourth in the group and say at the moment 
The Mercedes is still going to lose out on a podium place in its respective group. Morgan Tilbrook, who is also competing in the Intelligent Money British GT Championship in a GT3 McLaren. And is coming on in leaps and bounds under the tutorage of Marcus Clutton, who is the pro driver that he works with. Now, for Richard Neary, busy part of the race now as he looks to try and carve his way through the traffic. Next to the cars, he's going to want to squeeze past his Richard Mason's GT4 McLaren. Then he'll close up onto the coattails of the Ginetta that lies just ahead. Should be able to work his way past that Ginetta without too much issue. So that's Alex Stevenson, the Scotsman, who stays well and truly out of harm's way. And Richard Neary can continue on his merry way. On to lap number nine he goes, eight minutes remaining. But having got past one batch of cars, there's still more cars up the road to deal with. And it's going to be Sean Winder's car is the next of those. We spoke to Sean earlier on and his return to the championship for the first time in 10 years. There goes John Dillon. He's in second place, but he's the best part of 14 seconds adrift of Richard Neary. And John Dillon is in a GT3 car, so it's GT3 cars first and second at the moment. So that's the leading GTO car, which is Ben Dimmock, who's there in third place. He's got a bit of a gap between himself and the next of the cars, which would be another GT3 car, which would be Laurent Demise, who sits there in fourth position at the moment. So Ben Dimmock comfortably leading Group GTO. And the only other car that really can take the group win away from that radical RXC of Ben Dimmock would be the Brabham of Paul Bailey, who has sort of plateaued now. Gained one more place last time through, but he's not quite inside the top six as yet, is Paul Bailey. He's in seventh position at the wheel of the recovering Brabham. And he's going to be, at the moment, probably about 10 or 12 seconds behind the Radical. So we might, on the long shot, just see the Brabham begin to appear into view. Let's just have a quick look. There goes Ben Dimmock. Couldn't quite spot the Brabham in the background, but it's coming, that's for sure. Paul Bailey lapping quicker and quicker and quicker. He did last time through a 2 minute 2.5. Ben Dimmock did a 2 minute 5.0. So the gap is certainly coming down between the pair of them. Out of the loop, up towards the flat-out Aintree corner, which brings them onto the Wellington Straight and on towards Bro Brooklyn's corner. Busy part of the race, as you can see, as John Dillon's working his way through traffic. Ben Dimmock is about to catch all of that traffic and will have to deal with it as he sits there in third position. Now, where is the Brabham? That's the big question. We should see Laurent Demise's Ferrari come through. There it is. And the Brabham should be the next one after that, is it? No, there's Graham Tilly and then Paul Bailey. And Paul Bailey is... There he is, though. There goes the Brabham of Paul Bailey. So he is starting to close in, but has still got a huge, huge amount of work to do. He's done lots of it already, but he's got the difficulty of, of course, every time he gains a place, gaining the next place becomes ever harder. So there's only six minutes to go. How high can we get Paul Bailey in this one? Well, I think he should be able to catch Lucky Kira, who is now ahead of him. There is number 247. That's Lucky Kira, who was running in fifth place, but on that lap got picked off by the Nissan. So Graham Tilly's Nissan is ahead. You can see the almost burgundy Nissan with its day glow now ahead of the Ferrari. That is a, a change for position, but again, doesn't affect the points that Lucky Kira would score because he is still the Group GTC leader at this stage. Jensen Lund still running just outside of the top ten. Porsche ahead of him, Porsche behind him. The red Porsche is just about to lap, which I think is David Franklin. And the two Porsches behind, they're worth watching out for as well. Jensen Lund is soaking up the pressure from the first of those white Porsches, but that Porsche behind him does, at the moment, I think lead Group GTB. Which is going to be Jan Klinglenberg. So, Paul Bailey's charge continues. We said he got past Lucky Keir at the beginning of the lap. Well, he's now going to pick off potentially the Nissan of Graham Tilly, and this would put the Brabham now up into fifth place if he can make it stick. He won't do anything round through Abbey, but might be able to do something on the brakes as they head in towards Village, which is the heavy braking area for the right-hander that they're just coming up to. Brabham up the inside. Graham Tilly understandably lets the car go there because they are running in different groups. So, Group GTO Brabham, BT62, goes past... Group GT3, Nissan. So that now puts Paul Bailey up into fifth position. And he's now chasing down that blue and orange Ferrari of Laurent Demise. But that's the whole length of the Wellington straight, really, between the pair of them. 
And Lauren Demise is lapping two minutes seven, he just did. Paul Bailey, two minute three. So Paul Bailey was four seconds a lap quicker. And that's a big, big problem and a mistake. I'm afraid to say a spin for Russ Lindsay. Or is that, no, and he's gone through the gravel, but is that an engine failure or a spin? No, I think it's a big, big moment coming out of Cop's corner, I think, where he's tried to gather it up and has probably had two or three attempts at twirling his arms to try and save the car and eventually couldn't quite manage it. But there is, right, some damage to it. And that looks as though there's a little bit of fluid actually coming out. So I do wonder if maybe he hasn't got away with that. Yeah, definitely, isn't there? There's something. Ah, it's fiberglass scraping on the ground. And that's what it is. I thought it was liquid coming out the side of the car, but that looks like fiberglass. Lots of gravel coming out as well. Fiberglass. And do need to be careful with the Ginettas as well, because the uh, hot exhaust run down the side of the car as well, down the sill line. So if it's got damage to the sill, could end up with fiberglass on the exhaust, and that would not be a good thing. Uh, and they're all now trying to get out of the way to allow Lauren Demise and the Brabham of Paul Bailey to get through. So Paul Bailey has already caught the, caught the Ferrari of Lauren Demise. Returning to the championship, gets up the inside of one of the GT4 McLarens. That's Richard Mason that he squeezes his way through. And he needs to work his way through and pass this recovering Russ Lindsay Ginetta, which he should be able to pick off as Russ is still throwing gravel at everybody behind. Paul Bailey picks that car off onto the Hamilton straight, as does Graham Tilly and then Lucky Keir. And I think there was almost contact was there between the pair of them. They certainly both jinked severely out of the way. But for Paul Bailey, Progress will still continue. Alex Stevenson's Ginetta will be the next he'll pick off, which he should do. Here he goes up the inside into the braking area for Village. And now the next car will be for position, and that will be the dark blue and orange Ferrari in the hands of Laurent Demise will be the next of the cars that he wants to try and work his way through. And that now would put the Brabham up into fourth place overall. Still doesn't gain Paul Bailey, despite all of this effort, any more championship points because it's not cars in his group he's picking off. So up the inside of Lauren Demise, through goes the Brabham. Lauren trying to brave it out, but Paul Bailey will sneak through. Yep, there he goes. Brabham BT62 with now just two minutes to go up into fourth position in the race. And that, I'm afraid to say, is David Holloway. Problems for the Whitebridge Motorsport Aston Martin GT4. So that is out of the race. For our race leader, though, Richard Neary, it's been a, a fairly untroubled run, which was really what they needed after... Uh, having to reshell the car following an accident at Spa-Francorchamps in the British GT Championship. They missed the next round of that championship, which took place last weekend at Snetterton, but have been able to come back for GT Cup. So they've not missed any GT Cup races, which is exactly what they wanted to do to ensure that they stay at the sharp end of the championship standings. Jensen Lund still coming under pressure for the final place inside the top 10. He's got the Group GTB leading Porsche of Jan Klingenberg sitting right behind him. They've had a, a pretty much a race-long battle, have those two, but the Porsche, as hard as it's pushed, hasn't been able to get itself through and ahead of the Lamborghini, which should be the case in reality, because a Group GTC car should have uh, more power or better aero than a Group GTB machine. So Jensen Lum doing a good job of uh, hanging on to the position ahead of the Porsche. And I don't think, despite the hard driving from Jan Klingenberg and the fact that he's continually sitting in the slipstream and uh, despite the Lamborghini of Jensen Lund trying to break that toe, he's still just going to surely sit behind him and make sure that he finishes uh, in the lead of the group, which is what he wants at the will of that Porsche. Whereas for Jensen Lund, he's going to finish just off the group podium, actually fourth in Group GTC, that number nine, Ferrari, uh, number nine Lamborghini is currently in. So we're into the final few seconds of the race. Richard Neary is surely on course for yet another win for himself and the team ABBA Racing Mercedes, but he's going to get over the start-finish line with just seconds to go, actually. So what was it, about six seconds to go? So he is now onto the final lap of the race. So they've already had, what, uh, some eight wins overall in the GT Cup Championship for 2021. If you add into the fact that on a couple of occasions they finished second on the road, but second on the road to a car which isn't uh, scoring championship points, so they have picked up the points for the win. You could argue it's more wins, but flash of the lights for Richard Neary to let the car ahead know that he's coming. That's Mo Ritson's car. John Dillon is a long way adrift, what, 15 seconds adrift at the wheel of the number 61 Lamborghini in second position in the race, but he's still coming under pressure from Ben Dimmock's Radical. It's not that far behind, really, so second and third up towards the top section of the hangar straight still with traffic to deal with as well that's going to be the team orange Ginetta 
of Simon Orange that lies ahead. And yellow flags down in towards the Vale as well means that John Dillon can't overtake that car there. I would imagine that's because of the stricken car of David Holloway wherever the Aston Martin came to rest, but yellow flags meaning that John Dillon's just got to wait until the exit of the corner to the green flag, and then he could overtake, and not before. So past he goes now that they're out of the, the danger zone. Picks off the car, and Ben Dimmock should follow through. And that's Lucky Kira by the look of things. Problems for Lucky. How unlucky is that with the final lap underway? And at the wheel of the LK Motorsport car, he is not going to make it. Den ben Dimmock almost outbreaks himself there at the wheel of the Radical as well. Up the inside of Simon Orange and just was able to hang on to it. But for Richard Neary, up towards the top section of the Wellington Strait, he goes round through Brooklands for the final time. It is going to be a lights to flag victory for Richard Neary. Got really close at turn number one when they went three wide, the Radical and Paul Bailey's Brabham. But Richard Neary came out. And he's going to claim the win here. Well, not quite lights the flag, was it? Because the Radical did lead for about half a lap. But as far as the lap charts are concerned, it's every single lap that Richard Neary has uh, been leading as he came over the start-finish line. So Richard Neary claims uh, what is the ninth overall win this season in the GT Cup Championship for himself and Team Abra. And that really repays the team, having reshelled that car uh, in the course of, what, really just two or three weeks. Second is going to be John Dillon who has already taken the checkered flag, and third will be Ben Dimmock at the wheel of the Radical. Wait for the fourth-place car to come over. It will be the Brabham. What a recovery drive from Paul Bailey at the wheel of the Brabham. Congratulations to him. Whatever happened at turn number one, we didn't quite catch it, but either way, take nothing away from the performance of Paul Bailey, who uh, would have been, I'm sure, annoyed, fuming, uh, and certainly had the bit between his teeth to carve his way from 41st position uh, following uh, the, the spin to fourth position overall at the wheel of that glorious Brabham. At fifth place will go the way of Lauren Demise, and sixth place we should see Graham Tilly coming through. This is Lackey Christoforu, who is right on the tailpipes of Nick Phelps. This will be for the final place inside the top 12 by the look of things. Nick Phelps will finish third in Group GTB. Lackey Christoforu, I think, will finish fourth in Group GTC as they continue to squabble over the start-finish line. But what a great start to the weekend here at Silverstone for the GT Cup Championship. Uh, all of the drivers waving their hands to the marshals, so you'll spot each of the cars uh, sporting an orange heart on it somewhere, some of them more than one orange heart. And that is all to show our support for the marshals, who very sadly one of their marshalling members was lost, Robert Foote, at Brands Hatch just a couple of weekends ago in an incident there. So. Without them, we simply cannot go motor racing. And it was, I think, a, a stark reminder that what they do is vital and dangerous. And that is Jensen Lund pulling off at the end of the lap. Now, Jensen did lose a position on that lap and finished down in 13th position and fourth in the group. But looks as though there's clearly a problem with the Top Cats racing Lamborghini. And if that's the case, sensible driving there by Jensen Lund, rather than limp the car around and perhaps cause more damage to it on the slowdown lap, Get the car off the circuit if you're not happy that you're going to cause more damage than just park it up and let the marshals deal with it and get it towed back to the garage. So Richard Neary working his way in towards the pit lane and then we should hopefully be able to run you down through some results very shortly. But that's win number nine of the season for Richard Neary, sharing with his son Sam and the two of them are dovetailing their commitments with the GT Cup Championship with what they're doing in the British GT Championship and great to see that they are right at the sharp end of the championship. So all of the cars working their way back down pit lane and then once they have worked their way down to pit lane they'll all head towards Park Fermi. Confirmation of the results then, it's a win for Richard Neary. In second place was John Dillon and third place but the winning group GTO went the way of Ben Dimmock. Paul Bailey recovered to finish in fourth place with Lauren Demise in fifth and Graham Tilley completing the top six. The winner in group GTC was Andy Stoker at the wheel of his Ferrari with James Webb finishing in eighth place. Jan Klinglenberg was the winner of group GTP in ninth place and Richard Marsh came home in tenth position. Uh, in eleventh place it was Nick Phelps. Twelfth place was Lackey Chris Deforu. Warren Gilbert, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Jensen Lund finished in 13th place. Tom Barrow was 14th and 15th was Roy Millington. The winning wet group GTH went the way of the number 32 McLaren in the end of Alex Millikin from Morgan Tilbrook, who finished second in the group in the end. He was fourth, wasn't he, for a period of time, but came through to finish in 17th place. 18th place was the number one 
McLaren of Josh Jackson, who was leading Group GTH, but ultimately finished in third in the group and 18th overall. Moy Ritson was there in 19th place and completing the top 20. It was Charlie Kemp that finished in 20th position. A fantastic introduction to the GT Cup Championship for our first race here at Silverstone. Don't forget, we've got more racing coming up later on today. We have got the first of two pit stop races over the course of this weekend. That race is due to go green at five tw uh, 10 past five this afternoon. 10 past five this afternoon. So our live stream will be going live about five or 10 minutes before that. So please join us for our GT Cup pit stop race later on. But from everybody here, GT Cup team at Silverstone. Until then, it's goodbye.